Okay, so in addition to pay attention to the layout design of the dashboard, so um, one important way uh, consideration of creating dashboard is that how we can make the visualizations actionable. Because we want to identify patterns from visualization to gain the knowledge that can help us make decisions. So that is the ultimate goal of using visualization. Uh, so at their best, graphics are instruments for reasoning about quantitative information. So the most effective way to describe, explore, and summarize a set of numbers is look at pictures of those numbers. OK, so uh, this is similar to business intelligence model of moving data from information and information to knowledge. OK. So let's use a uh, KPI as an example. So uh, KPIs and dashboard focus on direct discoveries. OK, and analytic tools provide the ability for exploratory discoveries, for example, like the drill in filterings, grouping, adding variables, parameters, cross tables, etc. OK, so you must know what you are measuring and what performance is desired before you create a KPIs or before you create those dashboards. So this is an example of a key performance uh, you, uh, visualizing KPI. So we can also show it in graphically. So for example, this one is a bullet chart. That is a great example. Okay, so note that all the data from the data table has been encoded to this bullet graph. Okay. Okay, so here are um, some, let's introduce some principles of uh, creating actionable visualizations. So Eric Duo is a vice president, vice president of the analytic and intelligence at the EW Scripts company, and he created this those rules that for actional visualization. Okay, so the first one is that the question to answer must be identified. Okay, the question to answer must uh, be identified. Okay, so let's say this example. So in this example that the also starts out the visualization by asking a question. So which regions are most profitable? Which regions are most profitable? And we can easily see that the question has been answered uh, perfectly by using this visualization. Uh, this question is also very clear so that how was uh, Valentine's Day spending changed over time. And we can see that they also use a set of different line charts and also they highlighted some specific data point. Okay, and also um, at the bottom, there is also a summary of this on um, those data. Okay, so this question does not have to be um, a vertically asked on the visualization. So even without a question in the title, so this visualization answers all sorts of questions about right sightening uh, in New York City. So the second principle is that the data needed must be available. So sometimes if you don't have the data that in the original data set, you can get that from additional data resources or you, you need to create some calculations to generate the data that are needed. OK, uh, so this remember, this is the Halloween data. That is a good example. And uh, but actual data can be appended to create a rich analysis. So in this case, they also incorporated the, the weather data okay, to, uh, to have a very good example that how the rain affect the tricky treating. The third exam, uh, principle is that the visualization should be tailored to the person who use that information. Okay, so 
are your audience the general public or just VP of the finance or the CEOs? Remember, we had example earlier that uh, people from different different audience may hear different um, analysis. Also, that your visualization should also be designed accordingly. So this is a great example that um, uh, the visualize the key elements from the income states. Uh, it won't replace a traditional income statement for accounts and finance execute, uh, executives. It provides a view of the data that isn't available in a traditional income statement. It is designed for specific audience in mind. Okay. Did you see those bullet chart? Okay, so those numbers may not make sense to general public, but it does, they do have some meanings for its audience. The story uncovered in this visualization should be evident. Okay, uh, so as I said, the views should not need any advanced degree of statistics. Uh, in statistic to interpret your visualization. Okay. So again, uh, the same example that we saw earlier, so that answer the question in the visualization in a number of different ways. Uh, that um, we know that unprofitable states, regions ranks the profit ratio and the regions over time. Okay. So the author set up a question and also then answers it in an obvious way, way. Okay, and also the action required should be clear. Okay, remember that we want to uh, provide um, help to make actions, and the actions that required should be clear. Okay, so have clear action applied to both using the visualizations and interpreting the output of the visualization. Okay, so the visualization should give clear directions, especially if there are interactive features. Okay, so for example here, you say click to field. Okay, so make sure that the users know what to click to get the information. Okay, so this is a zoomed in chart to see the direction. And also, the action required as a result of the output from the visualization should also be clear. So we can say here, it has been 19 days since the last inspection for one of those power stations. So these little indicators will help draw attention to these problems so that the readers know they need to do something. Okay. And in addition to those rules, so the dashboard should also pass what we call the five second test. Okay, so it is a goal that you should know what is going on in this dashboard in five seconds. Okay, so because this is good, you know exactly what it is. Like we, you need a good title, clear map, okay. So uh, how to achieve those five second principles? Okay, so have a good title. In this case, this title immediately tells us that what am I looking at? Okay, so if the title is my dashboard, that will not be that helpful. And also we should move the most important part, go to the top or top left, as we said earlier. Legend should go nearest to the viewers. Okay, in this case, we have a map are using different colors. So the legend should go near the viewers. Do not use multiple color schemers on a single dashboard. And you can see that here, the colors are consistent. And also for the same type of the stuff, we're using the same color. So for, for this uh, location, we are using brown. And also on the other line chart, we also use brown to indicate the data from that location. Use five or less views. So in this case, we have one, two, three. Okay, we have only three views. And provide interactivity. Okay, so find some of the filters, the highlight, 
the actions that in Tableau. OK, so here are some five questions you should consider when you design a dashboard and also when you review the dashboard. So after creating something that you are ready to publish, invite someone to show them your visualizations. OK, so it's, it's always good that to get ideas from other people that looking at your visualization. OK, and also based on a five dashboard, five second test. So uh, the purpose of dashboard would, would be immediately clear. OK, so what problems does this dashboard resolve or what questions does it answer? Have you used the space effectively? Is there a better way to display the data? Does add things just because you can make or because they are necessary? OK, so make sure that everything on this visualization is useful and valuable to the end users. Sometimes simplest visualization tells the most compelling story. OK. Have we used filters, highlights, or the action, or the other actions to provide interactivity? Okay. Even go through each of these and make sure it display as you would expect. To be sure that, go through each of those uh, and make sure they are display as what you expected. Okay. So make sure check different scenarios. And make sure to include color legend, etc. So here, this is example. Okay, so the dashboard review example. So before we review, so look at what are the questions. Okay, so what question does this one answer? Okay, is the information displayed in the best way? Okay. Again, pie chart, is that really nice? Does everything add values? OK, does everything add values? OK, are there any filters? Well, we, we will know that we will not we will not know that in this case. And also, are there any clear labels? OK, titles. OK, is that uh, easy to read those labels, those titles, etc. OK, so this is an improved one. OK, we can see that the title clearly addresses the questions. OK, and we're using bar chart instead of pie chart so that with a clear comparison, and also the labels, we're using uh, uh, less labels, but we can show more information. We also sort the data so that uh, for stronger visualization of the sentiment, and also we save the, author, the reader's time to interpret the result.